the OECD has put out a paper called Policy Challenges in the Next 50 Years. This paper is all about what seems to be their prediction for the destruction of capitalism. In it is laid out the doomsday scenario in which everything is basically going to come to a head. They're giving it till about 2060 when capitalism will finally collapse and what emerges out of it will be something very different. In fact, they are describing it somewhat like a mixture of capitalism and feudalism. Specifically, what they are saying is that there's going to be a collapse in the global economic growth rates, a rise in feudal wealth disparity, collapsing tax revenue, huge migrating bands of migrant laborers roaming from country to country, the end of the recent growth in the developing world, a series of worsening environmental catastrophes. They're saying that the rate of global economic growth will slow to about 2.7%. Now, along with that, they're predicting a massive explosion of income inequality between the rich and the poor. One of the criticisms that they're actually making is the rise in the amount of automation of production, meaning the rise in using machines as opposed to people. Now, as Marxists, we understand that this is what's called the organic composition of capital. And then when you replace workers with machines, you're raising the organic composition of capital, which means overall there are less wages going out into the economy. And when you have this rising of the organic composition of capital, you're producing less value because it is only human labor that produces value, which should not be confused for prices because prices or money are, are just monetary manifestations of value. Now, what they're saying is that this could further automation in society in the next little while, can, even in uh, medium-skilled jobs, like we've seen the automated tellers and stuff like that for McDonald's and, and whatnot, and automatic burger makers, even like um, medium-skilled jobs could soon be replaced by machines, and this would cause about a 30% increase in the impoverishment of you know that field. Now, what we should do is take a little bit of a closer look at constant capital and variable capital. Now, Marx said over time, capitalists invest more in mechanization and technology relative to using labor. They try to get more profits by replacing labor with machinery to boost the productivity of the workers. So, over time, capitalists invest more in constant capital, C, than variable capital, V. So the ratio, CV, which Marx called the organic composition of capital, rises as capitalists expand production over decades. But more mechanization and innovative technology will boost productivity and probably increase profits. So it is likely that the amount of profit, S, to the amount of wages paid to workers, V, will rise, depending on how well unions do against the employers. This ratio, SV, Marx called the rate of surplus value, is equivalent to a rise in the profit share compared to the wages share in all output. So here's how the law works. If CV rises faster than SV, then the rate of profit, S slash C plus V, must fall. It's simple math. Marx says that in reality, that is what does happen in capitalist economy over the long run most of the time. What has happened in the U.S. in the last 50 years? CV has risen faster than SV over the period. So the U.S. rate of profit is lower in 2014 than it was in 1947 or even 1963. This is equally true globally. However, there have been periods where SV has risen faster than CV. Now, what they're predicting to go along with this is a massive drop in tax revenue for states. I mean, of course, if people are making less money, you have less to tax, which, of course, would then begin to shift the burden of tax from the people back up to the capitalist class where it pretty much should be. However, we are also well aware that the more we try to shift the tax burden upon the capitalist class to pay their fair share, the more they find ways to not pay it. I mean, they'll just simply move their headquarters to a mailbox in the Cayman Islands or somewhere else that's a tax haven there will always be somewhere that's willing to set itself up to, to take this position as a tax haven. So that's never really going to go away. So then there comes the suggestion of Thomas Piketty's you know, global tax on wealth or the, the rich, which isn't going to happen because there would have to be some kind of overall reaching one world government in order to carry that out. But that's not going to happen. There's always going to be a haven for them somewhere because those same people that don't want to pay the taxes 
are the same people standing on top of the entire world economically and hold all that power. The OECD has a clear message for the world. If rich countries, the best of capitalism is over. For the poor ones, now experiencing the glitter and haze of industrialization, it will be over by 2060. If you want higher growth, says the OECD, you must accept higher inequality and vice versa. Even to achieve a meager average global growth rate of 3%, we have to make labor more flexible, the economy more globalized. Those migrants scrambling over the fence at the Spanish city of Melilla, next to Morocco. We have to welcome, en masse, to the tune of maybe two or three million a year into the developing world for the next 50 years. And we have to achieve this without the global order fragmenting. Now you notice how they were saying that for us it's, it's over now, but in a while longer, the developing world, it's going to be over. Now this shows the uneven development of the globe that has taken place. Essentially what this means is that that cheaper labor which is overseas in the developing world in the third world hasn't been entirely used up yet. Their wages, as according to the wealth in their country, are still low. They are still, relatively speaking, a more profitable place to invest in labor. Eventually that's going to dry up and there's going to be nowhere else to go for cheaper labor. The economy of Africa, or the, the population of Africa, isn't big enough to accommodate the entire global economy. There's a lot of people, but not enough to support the entire world for cheap labor. And that's essentially what they're saying here, is that they're going to run out of cheaper and cheaper labor to exploit, which is why they're suggesting migrants, cheaper labor that has nothing to lose broken down to the point where they essentially have to be nomads for labor. And we, 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 we already know what migrant labor is like. Mexicans, there's t tons in China. This is what they want for the entire capitalist class, for the entire, pardon me, the entire working class. This is what they want the whole thing to end up being. And I think this, more than anything, demonstrates the entire class nature of what's taking place before our very eyes. Those on the top, the very economic elite, are well aware that the system is very close to coming to an end. And they can see how things are going. There's been a tremendous drop in the rate of profit globally. And that is leading towards greater and greater crisis. And I think they're finally seeing that now. That one last stab is going to end everything. And what they're trying to do is maintain that global order. Trying to prevent social unrest. In other words, trying to prevent revolution. Thank you for watching. Please comment and rate the video. If you liked it, hit subscribe or check out some of these other great videos. If you wish, share it on social media. And while you're at it, why don't you follow me on Twitter? And if you got time, go on over to the MRN bookstore and check out some of the latest books available.